Hey, I'm sure you've noticed that I've worked Nate Berg in. I don't know how long you've been watching. Maybe you remember back when Nate was 11 and uh, I did my first show with him. He's a young man from Blair, Wisconsin that bet his brother $5 that he could like fishing so much he could do it for 30 straight days. And he unofficially set the Guinness Book of World Records by fishing 1,262 days. And I'm proud to say that during that period of time, I filmed with him a couple of times. I filmed with him first when he was 11. He had been on Tom Brokaw's Nightly News because of what he was doing. It had got to be a kind of a big thing across the country. North American Fishing Club at the time got behind him and, and helped him with it. After that happened on Tom Brokaw's, I was his only hero is what he kept telling Broco over and over. Well, everybody got in touch with me about, I didn't see the newscast myself. But anyway, we got in touch with Nate's father and asked him if he would be willing to bring Nate up here and come fish with me for a day. We'd fish largemouth bass together and uh, come and film a show with me. And I would talk about him and introduce him to you. This kid come out there, it was like the 14th or 15th of October. You know those days where it's gray and, and cold out and, and some wind, not a lot of wind, but just enough to make it feel like it's colder than it really is and drizzling a little bit and so forth. That kid sat out there with bare feet and a rod and he never missed nothing for two straight days. Never complained once. His last cast, he caught over a five pound bass on it. I mean, there was nothing I could tell him that he should be doing with a rod and reel that he wasn't doing. He had already mastered the spinning rod uh, uh, amazingly, and he was 11 years of age. The Guinness Book of World Records told him that where was all of his witness statements. So what do you mean witness statements? Nobody said anything about witness statements. Oh, you had to have a signed statement by someone else and witnessing it and dating it for every day that you fished. He didn't. He broke the record, but they wouldn't give him the award because nobody told him about the witness statements. As you all know, I have five daughters and I've never had a son. And Nate is kind of the unadopted, adopted son I never had. After having to leave due to the onslaught of a winter snowstorm, a bad one, it made conditions simply too difficult to get out. Although I wasn't able to myself, Nate Berg of my staff went back to finish the story a few weeks later. Bring it. Because of its exceptional flavor, convenient size, and habit of schooling, whitefish have long been a mainstay for commercial fishermen in the Great Lakes. In Wisconsin, they're caught mostly by commercial fishermen, who harvest about 2.8 million pounds annually in the waters of Green Bay and Lake Michigan. Unlike its largemouth trout or salmon cousins, the lake whitefish has a small, extremely delicate mouth, so it's confined to dining on insects, freshwater shrimp, small fish, bloodworms, fish eggs, and bottom organisms. Consequently, that means at times, feeding takes place on or near the bottom. There's one. Uh, do you got to play these pretty soft? Yeah, you want to you wanna go slow with them because they got a softer mouth and if you pull too hard, you'll rip them hooks right out. I don't think he's much more than two pounds or not. Wow, did he fight. There's so many different techniques that I figured out for the whitefish. Um, in the mornings, I notice a lot in the mornings and the evenings, they like the spoons worked hard. And my theory is, is because they're up in the rocks and the zebra mussels in, and they're eating mainly gobies. So you'll see me a lot in the mornings where I'm laddering the spoon and working it pretty quick. And then all of a sudden, as soon as that bite dies out, they usually go down in there in the, on the sand edges um, in like that 70 foot range. And when they do that, and then it's tiny little finesse hops. And what I like to do is I'll actually take the tip of my rod and kind of roll it in a fast little circle where you're just digging that spoon on the bottom and that spoon is creating actually a little dust cloud on the bottom. And those fish, my theory again is those fish see that dust cloud and they think the blood worms are coming out of the sand, out of their cocoons, and they come to investigate and then they see that little slider hook with the wax worm and they can't resist that. There's one.
He's hooked good. He's not very big. Oh, what do you know? Cookie cutter for me. I like these rods. Smooth. That looks like a good one, Brett. It was an absolute pleasure getting to know Brett as a fisherman, a person, but also his knowledge on whitefish. It, it was a lot of fun learning about a new fish that I really didn't know much about. Burping up a lot of air, that's for sure. Oh yeah, look at there. That's probably the big one of the day right there. At number 30, guess who's buying lunch? Thick. He caught the last one. Yep, last one on the lake, you gotta buy lunch. Load up our harvest into the Yeti and go walleye fishing. How's that sound? Sounds like a plan to me. Yes, I sent Nate Berg back because I couldn't go again. And Nate had been camera guy, and now he got to be the fisherman, which he liked better than camera guy position. But he did both and liked both and was good at both. As a matter of fact, he's great at both. So he went back and caught a bunch more whitefish, and they showed you uh, Greg's sliding rig deal with the jigs, and then uh, just a spoon on the bottom. That's one good way to catch them in winter. And for ice fishing, I mean, it worked very well. But there's other ways to fish whitefish, too. Have you ever targeted them in summer? A lot of people see clouds of fish out there, and sometimes they think they're walleyes, and they run big crankbaits through them and so forth. And what they're actually marking with their sonar are big schools of whitefish. And they're not going to hit those big crankbaits. They've got little, little mouths. But I'll tell you what you do. You take a heavy weight, tie it onto your line, and then about three feet up from there, you tie a three-way swivel, and you tie this piece of line onto that swivel, and another piece of line back here that gets back about four or five feet, and it's got a real lightweight paper-thin spoon on it, a real fluttering spoon. It's not heavy at all, it doesn't sink much. You take uh, half a mile or two-thirds of a mile an hour, and you can make that thing flutter beautifully. And then you tie a second one on, so you got two spoons, if regulations allow you to do that in the area that you're fishing. You can do it with one spoon as well, but if you can get two or three spoons out there and it's legal to do it, um, that more, much more fluttering will increase the catch. And then just troll along with your electric trolling motor and you can smoke them. In some places there's lakes up there that have 14 and 15 pound whitefish in them. So try that sometime in summer and you might come up with a new thing that you really like because you can catch the crap out of them. And every time you're buying smoke fish in, in the Supermarket, you're getting smoked whitefish or smoked Cisco, one or the other. And the Cisco is just a smaller version of the whitefish family. Now, let me tell you another lesson I learned, as long as we're talking about whitefish, and uh, Nate is over there catching his smile <laughs> and a bunch of fish at the same time. I was up to Leech Lake in Minnesota, up where Reeds is, has made famous. Um, in Walker, Minnesota. Leech Lake is a huge 55,000 acre lake up there that's got all kinds of things in it um, to catch. But I was up there ice fishing. There's a major run that happens in a few of the flats up there in winter for whitefish. And they get up to four, five, six pounds, good ones up there. So anyway, I'm up, up there one day for the whitefish bite. And we're over to the side here and I'm get set up and with the camera guys and I'm jigging and catching a few here and there and, and just average whitefish. I'm fishing them with a jig and a wax worm actually. And about 75 feet away there's this old feller sitting there and he's just piling them up on the ice. I mean it's like he can't catch them fast enough. And I'm watching this guy out of the corner of my eye. I don't want to be staring at him, you know what I'm saying? But I'm seeing him. And I'm thinking, okay, what in the hell are you doing? All of a sudden he says, hey, babe, come here a minute. I want to show you something. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> Man, I was wanting to learn whatever he was talking about right now because that was crazy. He was getting five or six or seven fish to my one. Went over there and I said, what's up? He brings in a, a white fish, average like that. He said, nope, put on a, a bait that... I watched him do it on an orange jig head. And I thought that was a mayfly larva, but he didn't say anything. And drops it down the hole right away. 
jig, 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 boom, got another one, brings one up, and it's just got a pot belly on it. Oh, he said, this is a beauty. He grabs the pot-bellied whitefish and he points it at me and squeezes and out dump 60, 80 dozen mayfly larvae. Look, still live. The fish had just eaten them. There's a whole cloud of them down there and the fish had just got done eating them. And he said, now that is what you put on your jig head for bait. Put them in a container or a cup or whatever you got and hooked up, well, I cannot tell you how much fun I had that afternoon because of a nice old fella who was willing to share with me something that he had learned that just made all the sense in the world to me instantly. And anybody could catch him because they were going to pound it. Amazing. You ever thought of doing that? Probably haven't. Probably haven't even fished ice fishing winter. Do it. That's the time really to do it. You can massacre them and have a blast. And you don't have to keep them all, obviously, just like any other fish. Put the biggest ones back unless you got one to mount and keep some eaters that you want to smoke and have a great time. Good fishing.